When we look at a wetland or lake, we often think about the opportunities to enjoy the water and wildlife. As we learn more about riparian areas, we can begin to appreciate other things wetlands and lakes provide, such as water quality and supply, forage production for livestock, fish habitat, and many other ecosystem services and values. These services are only possible when fundamental repairing functions are performed. Just like a watch provides us the service of keeping time through its finely interconnected gears and parts, repairing areas, through their interconnected ecological functions, provide these goods and services. Is your repairing area keeping up with the times? Repairing health assessment allows us to measure how well these functions are being performed. This video will explain the indicators we look at and tune your eyes to the different levels of health so you can examine your own repairing areas. Repairing areas are the transition zones between open water and the drier uplands of lakes, wetlands, streams and rivers. These lush green areas are built and maintained by water, either from a high water table or flooding. If our activities change the plants, soils or water regime, we can influence the health of these sensitive but vital areas. This Repairing Health Assessment Field Workbook has been developed to assess the health of lake and wetland repairing areas. While every repairing area is unique, there are some common aspects we look at, and when combined, these indicators tell us how healthy a repairing area is. The first indicator we assess is vegetation cover. In general, the less total plant cover there is of any kind, the less healthy a site is. All plants provide some filtering and trapping of sediment, compared to bare ground. So green is good, but some plants are better at these functions than others. Most troublesome are noxious and prohibited noxious weeds and other invasive plants. Such plants are alien to the natural plant community, spread rapidly, and are difficult to control or eradicate. Many invasive plants displace preferred forage plants for livestock and wildlife. Examples include Canada thistle, perennial sow thistle, toad flax, and many others. Where disturbances create bare soil, or when vigor of more desirable native species is reduced, invasive plants can take hold. A repairing site with few or no invasive plants scores healthier than a site with numerous large weed patches. Just like invasive plants, Disturbance caused plants, when abundant, indicate a shift in the plant community. Disturbance caused plants are common introduced weeds, like dandelion. Agronomic plants, like Kentucky bluegrass, smooth brome and clover, or occasionally native plants, like wild strawberry. These plants are often the first to establish in disturbed areas, and many have aggressive, fast spreading roots, allowing them to expand, often under heavy grazing use or mowing. Extensive cover from invasive and disturbance-caused plants usually means a loss of plant biodiversity and structural layers. This can impact functions like erosion protection, drought resilience, or wildlife habitat. The next indicators we assess focus on the tree and shrub community. A self-sustaining repairing forest or shrubland is integral to soil stabilization, nutrient and moisture cycling, and fish and wildlife habitat in most repairing sites. One of the things we look for is if preferred trees and shrubs like poplars, willows, or red osier dogwood are present in regenerating. Do we see enough seedlings or saplings to replace the older plants, or are there mostly only mature, aging plants?
Next, we look at preferred trees and shrubs for evidence of browse by livestock or wildlife. Are they being used lightly or more heavily? Watch for umbrella-shaped or flat-topped trees and shrubs that indicate long-term heavy use. We also look at how much of the woody vegetation has been removed by humans or beavers and has not had the chance to regrow. Woody plants can withstand low levels of use but can die out if used heavily, being replaced by less desirable species. Tree and shrub roots provide the natural rebar that holds banks and shores together, reducing erosion, improving habitat and increasing site resiliency. Next, we need to assess how much of the plant community has been changed from its natural state to something different as a result of our activities. Changes to structural layers and species in the plant community disrupt riparian functions. Common things to look for include areas where native plants have been replaced by non-native plants, where some tree and shrub layers are missing, as well as where cattails or bulrushes have been removed. We also need to consider the foundation that supports healthy plant communities, the soil and the hydrology of a site. The next indicators assess the physical health of the riparian area. When our land use alters the shape or contour of a site, creates hard surfaces, or compacts the soil, we reduce the ability of riparian areas to absorb and store water and support plant growth. Also, look for bare ground resulting from human activities, including livestock use. Bare soil without protective plant cover will quickly erode and contribute to water quality issues. Water levels in lakes and wetlands naturally fluctuate. The last indicator we assess is whether a lake or wetland is subject to human-caused addition or removal of water. In extreme cases, removing water may result in extensive areas of exposed shore, creating opportunities for weeds and increased erosion or loss of wetlands entirely. Raising water levels by draining surrounding areas into the water body or installing structures that prevent the release of water may result in flooding or prevent the normal timing and degree of natural fluctuations. In a riparian health assessment, some indicators are weighted more importantly than others, and they all get added together to come up with an overall health rating. When all the indicators we have looked at are rated highly, the riparian area is healthy. Like the intricacies of a watch, a riparian area needs all of its pieces to work properly. If not all the pieces are working perfectly, the ability to correctly perform its functions is impaired and the site may be unhealthy. Conducting a riparian health assessment is a great way to identify issues and showcase successes. This tool can help inform what management changes may be needed and it allows you to monitor the impact of those changes. Now that you've tuned your eyes to what to look for, how healthy is your riparian area? Stay tuned for a riparian health field day in your area or contact us if you'd like more information.